Okie dokie. This is my first video of my new idea. Uh, there's a couple names I'm not sure. Tales of Catman Drew, field service technician for Caterpillar. Um, that's one. The other one, um, or Tales of a Cat Service Tech. I think Cat Man Drew is better. But anyway, that was a, um, hi, I'm Drew, and um, Everything's Broke Garage is my uh, channel. And we're sitting in Everything's Broke Garage right now. Um, I had an idea about telling stories about my stuff that's happened to me over the years working for Caterpillar. And I've seen lots of crazy stuff. I'm telling you, it's incredible. So anyway, I thought, you know what, why don't I, well, I was going to write a book. I just not into a, a, writing a book up. It's not me. But anyway, um, I figured, you know what, I'll just one day, every day, I'll make one video of something that happened to me during my career in field service at Caterpillar. And um, please like and subscribe. And if you have questions about Caterpillar or any of these stories I'm telling you, feel free to reach out. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, this is kind of cool. I, I found these in the trash at the cat dealer. And this here, this here is what they call a forever seal. And if you look right here, there's two there's two metal metal flanges that are highly machined and they're touching each other. And behind them is a O-ring, a rubber O-ring, which gives it push out. Inside of here, as you see, there's oil right here. Now, every piece of heavy equipment other than Caterpillar uses the same setup. I would have to imagine. Where let's say a roller that has oil in it, a uh, sprocket, not sprocket, but um, idler, or um, like your final drive, stuff like that, use this seal. They call it the forever seal. And in fact, I think it says on here now, this floating ring seal is what they called it. But anyway, what's cool about this, and if I can see if I can do it, it's been a while. Oh, yeah, see? I'm able to move it. It turns, it, it rotates. But yet, the oil does not lick out. That is a pretty cool setup. And yes, these are forever seals. As long as you don't disturb them, they're fine. But once you get a piece of debris or something in here, it's over. All right. One other thing I thought was cool, which I couldn't allow to go in the trash, because it was in the trash and I, I got it out. This is a cut cut view of the inside of an early caterpillar injector or nozzle people call them different things but it's very basic but it's awesome so that's just for the heck of it this is it sitting in the machine here's the the pre-combustion chamber and it's in there okay it's all you see sticking out is this of course it's not cut in half but if you look closely here's where your fuel line goes right here see the little path that's machined into it okay that's that's the way it should be that's the way it is inside the machine now fuel enters here under high pressure from the injection pump comes in here gets forced down here where it has to force open this little plug, this little like stem, there's a spring, a very, here's the spring right here. Okay, it has to force this up and collapse this spring. Very high uh, tension on this spring. When the fuel is able to lift this, it is atomized into the engine through this little tiny hole. Okay, that's an atomizer. So this is happening every time the cylinder fires. Boom, 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 spray, spray, spray. Just thought I'd share that with you. I always thought this was really cool. It's a very easy way to explain how diesel engine works. Of course, today's technology is nothing like this. 
but it's, it's similar. Okay, so let me sit back and see what do I have written down for today. Boy, that smell that dead mouth, man. Let's see. All right, well, the first thing I've got written down here, <laughs> what a story. Um, Caterpillar came out with the EL series track, Traco. And basically it was a Mitsubishi with cat, you know, paint and stickers and engine and all that. But indirectly, Mitsubishi and Caterpillar have been together since the 60s. So anyway, I went out, was sent out to put tracks on a EL220, I think it was 220? Two, I think that's what it was. Um, our track shop uh, guy, I'm not going to name him, because if he's watching this, he'll know what I'm talking about. If I, my memory serves me, he went out and pulled the tracks off the machine. He cribbed it up and everything, his stands and all. Um, I don't know, I might be wrong. I may have cribbed it and removed the tracks. I don't remember that, but if I did, then I screwed up. But anyway, sent me back to put the tracks on the machine. Now the guy from the track shop had already delivered the tracks. The tracks are laying underneath the machine, ready to be wrapped around the, the you know, the track frame. Um, so I get out there and the machine was cribbed with stands. One of the stands was partially on asphalt, which has sunk in and the stand cocked and the machine slid off the stand. Perfect. Okay. Put this, spent a good hour getting the machine back off this ground onto the stands the machine ran don't get me wrong we could use the you know the hoe to lift okay so anyway we get the machine back onto the stands so using my truck crane i drugged the, the track as close as i could then lifted the front here's the sprocket here's the um I'm sorry here's the sprocket here's the idler and the track frame like this and the other end of the track is over by the sprocket, just laying on the ground. So I bring the track up, you know, across the two carrier rollers to the sprocket. Now the idea is you take the, the one half of the track and the other half of the track and you join them together and you put four bolts and that holds them together. I'm not sure, wait a second, I don't know, on the excavator I think it was a press fit pin. Regardless, we wrapped the track, me and a gentleman. Big guy, he was ex-Marine, worked with me at Caterpillar, still friendly with him. We get these tracks to, to on the machine. Well, we're trying to get the two pins to line up, and they won't. I mean, they're like this far away. I've tried come-alongs. I've used my crane. I've used everything. I even took the two carrier rollers off to give it just a little bit more slack. Nothing would work. Nothing. This was a hot day. Uh, we're... We're, you know, baking in the heat mm -hmm. of asphalt and concrete, and bright sun. The customer pulls up in his pickup. I had never been to this site before. Uh, it was a transfer station. So he pulls up, nice guy, young dude. He says, yo, how long is it going to be before you get that thing finished? And I said, sir, I have to tell you, this is really frustrating me. But I cannot get the tracks together. I mean, I've tried everything. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, I mean, this, I even counted the links. I called my track shop, talked to the, the head guy there. I said, how many links are in this EL220 that you just built? He, said, he gave me the number. He goes, that's exactly the right number. That's what was on the tracks. That's what I put back in. I just put on the bushings and, you know, grousers and all that. So I tell the customer this. He goes, you know something? I got this from another transfer station. I wonder if they didn't change something. I'm like, well, that would make sense if they did. I mean, I don't know. So I follow him into his office. He goes through the file. Lo and behold, these tracks were so worn. That's why we replaced them or had them re rebuilt. They were so worn, they were actually jumping off the sprocket, which happens a lot. So they added three inches or four inches to the piston that pushes against the idler 
a quick, a quick, show you how this thing works. Your track frame on a machine, dozer, track loader, don't matter. Um, it's the, they're all the same. You've got a big coil spring, huge. Sits down into a, a, a big, like, ah, how can I explain it? It's in, a, it's in a frame, okay? It's a very big spring. It's down inside. On top of, this, of that is the adjuster for the track, okay? That's what pushes out to tighten up your track. And then from there, it goes through a shaft that goes to the idler, which is what moves back and forth, which is the end. They added four inches to the piston of the track adjuster, which cannot be, it was invisible to be seen until they told me. And at that point, I took the track back off and I took all the covers off. And if you look inside, you can see where they added. It was not visible from the outside of the machine. Oh my God. Okay, so we cut off the piece that they added, clean up the weld area. Put it all back together, tracks fit. <laughs> so anyway, these are the kind of things that I have dealt with. It's stupid stuff, but it means a lot. Like that screwed the whole job because I could not get these tracks on. I tried and tried. So anyway, that was my first little story um, for today. And uh, hopefully you liked it. And I will tell you another one. Oh, by the way, yeah, this jacket, <laughs> I, this is my first jacket when I first started working at Caterpillar. Um, of course, I added stuff to it. There's some little cat scraper here and the little Caterpillar thing here. And we got, I make the cat service difference here. And my name, this is the dealer's name. Of course, I added the BMW and the Chevelle and all this stuff. But anyway, this is, it's a funny story about this. I had one just like it, identical. And I took it off. I was at a club, uh, a bar. And I went in there with a couple of my buddies. I had this jacket with me. I put it on the back of the chair. And what happened? I'm trying to remember. Somebody stole the jacket. I'm trying to remember where I was. Actually, I think I was, I think I was in a training that's exactly right. They sent me to school at another cat dealer. And I forget for what now. But anyway, I had this jacket. I took it off and put it on the back of my chair. At the end of the day, I go to leave. The jacket's gone. Where's the jacket? It's nowhere to be found. I'm like, what the hell? Now I'm thinking, okay, I left it somewhere or whatever. About five years later, one of our guys, our Sentinel service guys, which is oil and lube, in a truck. They come out to your job site, they change the oil filters, stuff like that. He said he was at a customer's shop and saw my jacket with my name on it in on the back of a chair at somebody else's job. Shop, not job. It infuriated me. So I called them. I talked to their service manager. I said, yo, my jacket's there. What do you mean? I said, somebody stole my jacket, and it's, it's in your shop. I was just told about it. Of course, they denied it. Never, got, never did get it back. So anyway, had to buy another one and start over. So this is my second one. <laughs> oh, well. Another, I added another story to my story, so I got two for one. All right, back, everybody. Thank you. Um, hope you liked my little story, and if you did, like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. And uh, let me know. And I'll, I will definitely tell more. I've got tons of them to tell. Okay. Catman Drew says goodbye from the Everything's Broke Garage.